Today was the case management hearing for the two petitions. And what we must first understand is that elections petition is a unique and peculiar, very special type of litigation. As a result, it has its own peculiar rules, practice, and procedure governing the way it is filed, the way it has to be served, the documents that accompany it, and the way that it is eventually tried or heard and determined. Another important peculiar aspect of the uh, elections petition law is that the practice and the procedure is governed not by the ordinary rules of court but by certain prescribed rules which are a part of the National Assembly Validity of Elections Act. That is the governing act which um, regulates elections petition and that act has accompanying rules which outline the process and procedure peculiar to elections petition and that is why it is regarded as litigation that is sui generis. Now a part of the compendium of rules governing elections petition is a rule that if there is non-compliance with any of the procedural steps or procedure or there is any violation of any of the time frames prescribed for proceedings to be done or steps to be taken, those deviations, those violations, those non-observations of either those rules, regulations, procedures or time frames can be fatal and can cause the petition to be uh, dismissed without any further hearing. Why the rationale is that these are types of matters which must be heard and determined swiftly so that the government of a country can be ascertained quickly if it is under challenge. So that the society and the parliament and the government of the day are matters that are settled. And that is why no allowance, no discretion or very little discretion and very little latitude is granted. You get one bite of the cherry, so to speak, and if you don't comply, well, that's too bad for you. The matter is dismissed and that's the end of the matter. That is far different from different types of litigation where a judge may have latitude to uh, forgive a violation or cure some procedural deficiency. Those jurisdictions and discretions do not exist in an elections petition. Having said that now, I want to now go to the petitions themselves. You would have heard today that there are a number of issues that arose which impact upon whether procedures were complied with, time frames were met, and whether the proper documents were filed within the prescribed time. As I said, if these deficiencies can be successfully established to the satisfaction of the court, then that's the end of the matter. The question of service within the prescribed time and by the appropriate mode has already been raised. Mr. Bharat Jagdev's lawyer has raised that, um, that Mr. Jagdev 
he's exploring it, he says. He doesn't have all the information that Mr. Jagde was not personally served. There is some, there, there is evidence or the petitioners are claiming that he was served by registered post. The lawyer said that he has to verify whether that was done. And most importantly, was a proper case made out for registered post to be granted as an avenue of service. You don't get registered post as an option for service automatically. One has to lead evidence to show that there were attempts to serve the matter personally, but that there were evidence of evasion of service and that after the service was evaded, then you go back to the court and you ask for a substituted form of service rather than personal service. Registered post was the service that was pursued in this case or allegedly pursued. Now there is also a time frame governing when you can obtain an order for uh, um, service by registered post. And there is also some requirements regarding the, the order that was granted in relation to registered posts. Does the, or, did the order say that once it is posted and not received by the recipient, whether that by itself constitute proper service? Or even if received, does that constitute proper service in law? These are matters of law and over the, over the years, petitions have been struck out if they were not in compliance with these requirements. In relation to service, very um, outrageously you heard that Mr. David Granger was not served within the prescribed time. It would be a matter of great moment if the petition is dismissed for late service on Mr. Granger. But that is a matter that we have to explore. The judge has already alluded to that. Then another issue is um, whether certain documents were filed that were required to be filed. And another issue that arose is whether what is the role that Mr. Granger, Respondent Granger will play. Is he uh, contesting the petition? Is he opposing the petition? Is he going to consent to the petition? Will he not oppose the petition? These are all issues that are governed by principles of law. Because one cannot, uh, one cannot approbate and reprobate in an elections petition. You can be a respondent and at the same time as a respondent you are opposed to the petition and then in the petition itself an order is claimed that will make you a beneficiary of the petition. There's, a, there's another legal issue and another legal web that we have to untangle. The Attorney General has a peculiar role to play in an elections petition. The Attorney General represents the public interest. The public interest includes ensuring that there is compliance with the law generally and compliance with the law in relation to an elections petition when there is an election petition. So the Attorney General has a, a sort of a roving jurisdiction and can point out any deficiency in the law and offer submissions to the court in that respect. An application was made by me to do so in this case and was granted. And the court has fixed certain time, fra time frames for, um, for Mr. Mendez to do what he asked to be done. And time frames were also fixed for myself to make submissions and any other lawyer who wishes to do so um, having regard to the issues that have been raised. I believe um, the 24th and the 29th are the two days in November that the Chief Justice uh, has fixed for us to return to the court, um, by which time I suppose 
all the tasks assigned by the Honorable Chief Justice would have been accomplished. And on that day, we are going for hearing. And then on that day, I suppose that um, uh, a, a date for ruling will be fixed. Maybe the petitions can be disposed of by this process. In anticipation, or in recognition rather, of that reality, the Chief Justice did not uh, fix any events beyond that. Uh, you know there were orders made beyond that and then she vacated the orders because of, for convenience um, and, and decided, and I think quite properly so if I may say respectfully, that it's important that we dispose of these preliminary legal issues before we deal with the substance of the petitions. The um, litigation has begun. It is at a very preliminary or embryonic stage and it would be premature and perhaps a little presumptuous for me to offer a view on its outcome or likely outcome. But having read it, I am of the firm view that they lack merit and I said that before. 